Clark Gable was an iconic American actor voted King of Hollywood by an adoring public throughout the 1930s and 1940s, Hollywood's golden age. His most iconic role was that of Rhett Butler in the 1930 epic film Gone with the Wind, in which he starred with Vivian Lee. Let's take a look at some of the stunning properties once lived in by this one-time King of Hollywood. From his longtime California house to a mysterious property and a fairy tale castle in Hollywood land, we'll get an inside look at the real estate portfolio of this legendary leading man. Clark Gable was born William Clark Gable in 1901 in Cadiz, Ohio. His father, William Henry Gable, worked as an oil driller and farmer. Sadly, Clark's mother, Adeline, died when he was just 10 months old. This early loss deeply affected Gable. As a child, his father remarried a woman named Jenny, who encouraged Clark's artistic interests while his father pushed more traditionally masculine pursuits. As a teen, Gable dropped out of school to work in a tire factory, and at 17, he was inspired to act after seeing a play called The Bird of Paradise, but he couldn't pursue it until inheriting some money at 21. Gable then toured with a small theater companies, eventually making it out west. In Portland, actress Laura Hope Cruz saw his potential and encouraged him to keep at acting. In 1924, Gable headed to Hollywood with the help of his acting coach and future first wife, Josephine Dillon, who was 17 years older than him. She meticulously transformed Gable, fixing his teeth and training his voice. Despite Dylan's efforts, Gable initially struggled to get roles, appearing as an extra. He went back to the stage, forming a lifelong friendship with Lionel Barrymore. Gable returned to Hollywood in the 1930s, but was rejected for roles at first due to his large ears. He finally got a speaking part in 1931's The Painted Desert. More substantial roles followed, playing rough villains opposite female stars and his breakout came with 1934's It Happened One Night, winning Best Actor. In the following years, Gable became one of Hollywood's biggest stars, doing films like Mutiny on the Bounty, San Francisco, and of course, Gone with the Wind. Gable was married multiple times too, first to his acting coach Josephine, and his third wife was actress Carol Lombard. He considered Carol the love of his life, but sadly she passed away in a plane crash in 1942. Later in life, Gable married twice more. One of his wives, Kay Spreckles, was the one who had Gable's only legitimate child, John Clark Gable, born after Clark's death. In 1960, Clark Gable died at the young age of 59 because of a heart attack just days after completing the film The Misfits. His legacy remains that of the definitive leading man and king of Hollywood. We can also find Clark's spirit alive in his former homes. So without further ado, let's take a look. We'll start off with Clark and Carol Lombard's ranch home in Encino, California. Instead of a gigantic mansion, this modest ranch property gave the couple a taste of peaceful country living, not too far from the hustle of Hollywood. The exterior of this nine room ranch ranch has a very good design with its white brick and wood frame facade, gambrel roof, and red brick patios. When the couple snapped up this place in 1939 for just 50k, the 20-acre property came complete with citrus groves, fields, a barn, and stables. It was like their own little farm. Inside their house, Carol had the interiors all decorated in an early American style, with pine wood everywhere. And get this, the oversized sofas and chairs were picked especially to fit Gable's large frame. One of the downstairs bedrooms was his office, while another showcased his firearm collection. Up on the second floor, their his and hers master suites were pure Hollywood glam. Carol's suite was decked out in blue and white and had a super luxe bathroom with marble everything. Gable loved playing up his down-home farm life here for reporters. He'd often pose on his tractor or be photographed milking cows. But sadly, after Carol passed away in the tragic plane crash, Gable was so heartbroken he tried to sell the Encino ranch. Luckily, a friend talked him out of it. While the property got subdivided in later years, at least the main house still stands as a Hollywood time capsule today. Now, for one of the coolest properties on this tour today, and what might be my favorite, a whimsical mini medieval castle that Clark Gable and Carol Lombard once called home. This draw-dropping house was originally built in 1926 as a fairy tale wedding gift for the daughter of Hollywood legend Alexander Pintages. 
By the 1930s, the home was being leased by none other than Carol Lombard's mother. And it was right here that a fancy wedding reception was held for Carol and Clark, since their initial Arizona elopement was a more low-key affair. Now, fast forward to 1986, when the place was in major disrepair, boarded up windows, much more. That's when designers Joel Schiller and Albert Heinzler swooped in to save the day. They could see past the dilapidation to the home's incredible potential. Through years of restoration, they brought the whimsical exterior and interiors back to life. From custom fabricated window details inspired by a hotel in Rome, to a kitchen countertop made from a vintage bowling alley, this home is full of amazing stories and one-of-a-kind finds. Wandering through the multi-level rooms and outdoor decks today, you can vividly imagine Clark and Carol living like royalty in this Hollywood castle. For our last stop, we've got a romantic Spanish colonial estate with major old Hollywood ties. This charming house was originally built in 1925 for Clark and Carol. Talk about incredible provenance. While the exterior appears well restored, it was in state when producer Joel Douglas first laid eyes on it decades later. But he fell in love in first sight, won over by the home's spirit and Hollywood history. He even found out later on that this was the very last residence of Clark, Gable, and Carol before her untimely death. Over the years, Joel oversaw extensive work to restore and update this Florida home. A wood ceiling in the living room and the vintage tile work in the kitchen. Elsewhere on the property, you'll find a super cool vintage pool house that screams old Hollywood glamour, plus a guest casita and plenty of room to entertain. And get this, the home is now fully furnished right down to the custom pool table made for Joel's famous father, Kirk Douglas. As Joel says, places like this are such special time capsules, or only ever custodians for a period of time before passing them on. Now, for a mysterious Hollywood tale. Rumor has it that Clark Gable once lived near East Grant Road in North Alvernon for about a year as he grieved the loss of his beloved Carol. While it's never been proven whether Gable actually lived in this next house or just spent a lot of time visiting, some neighborhood stories do say this place belonged to a childhood friend of Lombard's, and Gable would come here to feel closer to his late wife. The exterior of the home sure looks like it could have been a relaxing hideaway for the King of Hollywood with its five beds, 3,500 square feet, and a basement. Whether he lived here or not, we do know Gable frequented the Tucson area and had some headline-grabbing moments here as well. That wraps up our Clark Gable house tour. From cozy ranch homes to Hollywood land castles, it was very fascinating getting a glimpse into the real estate portfolio of this legendary leading man. Let me know in the comments below which Gable home was your fate. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss new videos. I'm Kara. Follow me on Instagram to chat, and I'll see you all in another one. Bye!